restoration means that was once here but now is there the taking from there and returning here where it was before returning to where it was that is the meaning of restoration the meaning of revival the meaning of resuscitation the meaning of prefab prefabrication rebuilding everything about reformation you must first know shalti ujue because kwa sababu na nini nimekuletea huyu jamaa nimekuletea huyu mtu nataka umrejeshe nataka umrejeshe you say just a moment utamuuliza ni huyu radhi kidogo what do you mean nataka unimrejeshe unamaanisha nini kwa kuniambia nimrejeshe huyu nini imetendeka kwa huyu jamaa kijana mzuri tu hivi nini kimetukia kwa huyu mkijana mzuri sana na sasa utajuaje kumrejesha wapi na wewe sasa utaelewa ni wapi unamrejesha kwenda unless you know where he was before usipojua kule alikokuwa hapo awali and you restore him back to there na uanze kumrejesha kwenda pale that's why i said this was a key component ndio maana nilisema kwamba hiki ndio kiungu cha muhimu nyeti of restoration cha kurejeshwa that the lord was talking about ambacho bwana alikuwa kinenea i want to move to the next most important nataka kwenda kwa ingine ambayo ni ya muhimu sana what are the features that have characterized this fall ni nini maelezo ambayo itaelezea mwanguko huu i want to go deep into kilindini deeper nataka kuingia kwenye vilindi kilindini sana then we can do the mechanics ili kwamba tuanze kufanya ukarabati to know what elements to change what to change what to change and then all together restore ili kwamba tuweze kujua ni nini cha kubadilishwa cha kubadilishwa alafu hatimaye tirejeshwe in this kind of conversation katika maongezi ama mazungumzo kama haya of defining the specific elements for restoration ya kuelezea maudu madu maudui hasa ya kurejeshwa it is another way of saying ni njia nyingine ya kusema that restoration is a process ya kwamba kurejeshwa ni hali it is one thing change it another change it another one change it ni kitu kimoja cha badilishwa kingine kibadilishwe kingine kibadilishwe haba uhaba kujaza kibaba haba na haba hujaza kibaba that's what he's talking about hayo ndio anaenenea so can we read the things the properties that have defined this fall basi natusome mambo ambayo yanaelezea mwanguko huu yameitambua yanaitambua mwanguko huu i am going back now ninarudi pale sasa this what he says here haya ndio anayoyasema about this fall kuhusu mwanguko huu look at this now tizama haya sasa he says asema first of all mwanzo kabisha this fall is synonymous mwanguko huu wajulikana It is very synonymous with Isaiah 56. Unajulikana sana na Isaiah 56. If you look at this fall, iwapo utaangalia mwanguko huu. You see the mirror imaging. Utaona kufanana kabisa kwa kio. Isaiah 56 plus 9 to 12. Isaiah 56 tisa hadi 12. Again Isaiah 56. Amza Isaiah 56. Verse 9 to 12. Mlango wa mstari wa tisa hadi 12. And this fall. Na mwanguko huu. They look alike. Wanafanana. Then you say wow. Alafu unasema that means we have come full circle. Inamaanisha kwamba tumezingira zimezunguka kabisa kikamilifu. It is like somebody going to their father. Ni kana kamba mtu anamwendea babake. Daddy. Baba. The world is repeating in my life. Ya kwamba dunia inajirudia kwenye maisha yangu. They are seeing the world is repeating. Wanaliona wanaona dunia ikijirudia. Meaning didn't I see this somewhere? Inamaanisha kwamba je, si niliona haya wakati fulani. Now why am I seeing it again here? Ni kwa nini tena nayaona hapa? Then you can connect the dots. Basi waweza shikamanisha haya mawili. Isaiah 56:9 to 12 says. Isaiah 56 tisa hadi 12 asema. What are the characters sticks of this fall. Je, matendo ya mwanguko huu ni yapi? You must read it to the church. Sharti usome kanisa. After defining where the church ought to be. Baada ya kueleza mahali kanisa lilistahili kuwa. And now 
coming back to where she has fallen na sasa kurudi mahali sasa limeanguka defining the small elements of the fall kueleza mambo madogo haya ambayo yalisababisha mwanguko wake then you tell them can precious people let us first look at what are the defining moments of this fall alafu baadaye utawaambia watu wa dhamane wacheni tuangalie ni nini kinachoelezea mwanguko huu mambo ambayo tukiona tunatenda tutajua sisi wenyewe bila kuambiwa ya kwamba tumeanguka mambo hasa ambayo tukiona tukitenda tutajua vizuri sana bila kuelezwa ya kwamba tumeanguka haleluya haleluya and he says this verse 9 na anasema kwenye mstari wa 9 isaiah 56 9 to 12 isaiah 56 9 to 12 all you beasts of the field enyi wanyama wote wa kondeni come to devour njooni kwa kuharibu all you beasts nyinyi wanyama hostile nation mataifa makali in the forest katika mwitu israel's watchmen wa wa majesh ama wachungaji wa israeli are blind wao ni vipofu they are all without knowledge hawana hekima they are all dumb dogs wao wote ni mbwa bubu they cannot bark hawawezi bweka dreaming wanaota lying down wanalala chini they love to slumber wanapenda kusingiza kus- yes Dio. yes Dio. the dogs are greedy waumbwa ni walafi they never have enough hawatosheki and such are the shepherds hao ndio wachungaji who cannot understand ambao hawezi elewa they have all turned to their own way wote wamerejea njia zao each one on his own gain kila mmoja kwa faida zake mwenyewe to his own gain kwa faida yake mwenyewe from every quarter toka kwenye uh, robo moja one and all moja na hata wote come jo say they wanasema We will fetch wine. Tutachukua divai. Tutachota divai. Tutaichota divai. And we will fill ourselves. Na tutajijaza with strong drink. Na vileo vya hali ya juu. And tomorrow, na hapo kesho shall be as this day. Itakuwa kama siku hii ya leo. They greater beyond measure. Na wanakuwa vikubwa sana kuliko kiwango. Did you understand one of the countenances? Je, umeelewa moja wao ya uso? One of the properties. Moja wao ya viumbo. One of the characteristics. Moja wao ya matendo, tabia. The features. Ya tabia. The properties. Vitu that define this apostasy. Ambayo inaelezea mwanguko huu wa imani. That define this spiritual impurity in the church. Ambayo inaelezea uovu huu ambao uko kwa kiroho kanisani. And if you listen to the clamor of god na iwapo utasikia ile kusema kwa bwana he was talking to the shepherds of israel alikuwa kinenea wachungaji wa israel and he was telling them na alikuwa kiwaambia that they have fallen short ya kwamba wameanguka on the measure of god katika kipimo cha mungu they are not executing the original plan awaleti ule mpango wa kwanza they have adjusted for themselves tayari wamezichukulia kwa kibinafsi they have looked at the original plan wameangalia ule mpango wa and they have crafted another plan which suits them and they say we shall execute our own plan because jehovah's plan has no goodness to us if you look at this conversation he was talking about one thing alikuwa kinenea jambo moja that the walls are broken ya kwamba kuta zimevunjika that now the devourer has entered na sasa yule wa kuharibu muharibu ameingia and the devourer is the devil na mraruaji ndio ibilisi he is sin yeye ndio dhambi and you can see that when they were supposed to be in the sentry towers na unaona kwamba wakati walikuwa wanastahili kuwa katika kiwango kimoja if you are in the police training college iwapo wewe unajifunza kuwa polisi kwa shule la polisi shule, police training college shule taasisi ya polisi 
If the police turn, I've not seen it, but I'm just saying off head now. The police, police training college. Ile taasisi ya polisi. It must have a fence and a wall. Sharti iwe na uwa na ukuta. And there is something called sentry towers. Na kuna kitu ambacho kinaitwa mnara wa katikati. Where it is raised. Ambayo imeinuliwa. And even in the military barracks by the way. Na hata kwenye kambi za majeshi. And in the prison prison barracks, prison also. Hata kambi za za magereza. Listen to this. Sikiza haya. There is supposed to be a fence, a perimeter wall and fence. Sasa ila saili kuwa na ukuta uwa. It is called a razor wire. Inaitwa kwamba razor wire. And in between them, na katikati yake, if you look at it from above, iwapo utaitizama tokea jubi, you will see sentry towers punctuating the wall. Utaona minara ya kati ambayo imeguzia nyuta. These are places on the wall. Hizi ndio sehemu zilizoko kwenye ukuta. When well, now you look at the sentry towers, there are here one tower, another tower, another tower. Okay ona minara hii ambayo imewekwa hapa kuna mnara moja hapa mwingine pale mwingine pale and the workers there na watendakazi pale at least in the army hata kwenye jeshi Be because first of all look at this mwanzo kabisa tizama haya if you look at the sentry towers ukiona minara hii ya kati those towers you find someone with an automatic machine gun and is well covered with a bullet proof jacket na amejifunika sana na ile koti ambayo bunduki ama eh, risasi zingia and then he, he has a helmet that is bulletproof ana kofia ambayo tena bunduki ama risasi hawezi ingia and he has goggles sunglasses that even if you fire him with 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 rays he, he will still see inside there pia ana miwani fulani ambayo hata ukimumulika na mwanga mkuu sana ata bado ataweza kuangalia and so you find him there basi utampata pale and he's always restless na kila mara hana utulivu he is not supposed to sleep hastahili kulala kamwe and he's holding the trigger like this na ameshika kile chombo cha bunduki hivyo and he's like this look na tizama yuko hivyo is always but i think these days they have cameras also tv right siku hizi hata kunazo nuruninga hapa na pale so it's even sophisticated now hata sasa hivi ni hali ya juu sana so he's watching the screen basi anatizama zile runinga but me i like the ordinary without watching the screen lakini mimi napenda ile ya asili bila kuangalia zile runinga allow me use the ordinary one niruhusu kuangalia kutumia ile ya msingi the biblical one ile ya biblia and he's holding the gun na ameshikilia bunduki and he's always looking at the fence na kila mara anatizama u and he's turning and looking this side anageuka na kuangalia upande huu and he's always walking with the gun na kila mara anatembea na kutembea na ule bunduki that's why in the army they are only allowed to work for 6 hours maximum ndio maana kwenye jeshi wanaruhusiwa kufanya kazi kwa muda wa saa sita peke yake to make sure they are maximum alert kuhakikisha kwamba wana umakinifu tosha because there is research maana kuna ule kutafuta ufumbuzi that says now sema that any more hours from 6 hours ya kwamba zaidi ya masaa sita then the human performance goes down basi utendaji kazi wa binadamu unarudi chini and so they are standing in the sentry towers basi wanasimama kwenye minara hizo za sentry and many times because they are restless na kila mara maana hawajatulia they do this wanafanya haya the radio is here ile radio iko mahali hapa the radio is here radio iko kwenye bega and many times when is when when is he saying why is it so peaceful na kila mara naulizana mbona kuna amani why is there nobody trying to cross the fence to enter kwa nini hakuna mtu ambaye anajaribu kuvuka uwa na kuingia just to be sure that everything is right kuhakikisha kwamba kila kitu kisawa he is caused to switch on the radio say hello hello this is bravo speaking anasababishwa kufungua radio maybe sema, they don't speak like that huenda i'm just saying ninasema kwa mfano tu huenda wasemwe hello iso. this is alpha 1 alpha 1 please hello huyu ni alpha 1 alpha 1 clear and safe please ni safi na tena uko salama can you give me your consent waweza ni i don't know me i'm just saying things really mimi nasema tu sijui maybe it doesn't make sense huenda hiyo nimeongeze ile ni says asema alpha 1 please alpha 1 tafadhali and then you hear the radio hello alpha 2 speaking na unasikia kwenye radio anasema alpha 2 naongea clear on this end continue ni safi upande huu endelea and saying clear now just two hours to time na, i don't know what they say na anasema ni kweli upande wangu umebaki dakika 2 kabla wakati <laughs> and 
that is meant to awaken them na hiyo inawasababisha kuwawe makini and to make sure they are alert na kuhakikisha kwamba wako macho because they are the watchmen maana hao ndio walinzi and if you think that they are only looking at the wire na iwapo unafikiria tu wanatizama zile nyaya then you are mistaken basi umekosea they are raised wameinuliwa so they can see far ili kwamba waweze kuona mbali if anything is coming iwapo kuna chochote kinakuja alpha one coming uh, looks like land rover intercept please alpha one inaonekana na kwamba gari ya land rover inakuja report needed please report inahitajika tafadhali yes, alpha one land rover anasema alpha one land rover oh kumbe ni officer fulani amerudi sasa kumbe ni officer fulani amerejea and then the, you know there is control alafu kuna ile kusitiri and if you see the master watchman na ukiona yule mulinzi mkuu he is always driving with land rover kila mara naliendesha ile gari la land rover and listen to this nasikiza haya there is a saying kuna ule msemo that his head is always in the war ya kwamba kichwa chake kila mara kiko vitani when it comes to you whether there is nothing happening ajapo kwako hata kama kuna hakuna chochote kinatukia but he always behaves as if there is a war which has broken out here lakini anajiendeleza kana kwamba kuna vita vimetukia this is what, what, where are your magazines why are you why are you a gun put your gun up like this anakuuliza excuse me why are you not alert i wapi funduku yako mbona haujamakinika mka boss there is no war why are you treating me like that mkubwa hakuna vita mbona unaleta i guess you cannot even answer him like that natumai hata uwezi mjibu hivyo so you see his head is always in the wall basi waona akili yake kila mara iko vitani wherever is driving with the land rover kote aende shako na lile land rover checking the sentry towers akitizama ile minara ya sentry he is always imagining an attack kila mara anafikia anakisia shambulizi so when he comes to you basi ajapo kwako the first thing he asks ya kwanza kukuuliza he said well ah uh, Uh, as anybody passed here anasema je kuna yote yamepita hapa why do i feel like there is a breach mbona nahisi kana kwamba kuna kuvuka mpaka haleluya haleluya i'm just giving you an example of a watch tower ninawapeni tu mfano wa yule ambaye ni mlinzi in the human sense katika uh, akili za binadamu how much more in the lord sense the spiritual sense heavenly sense na je itakuwaje katika uwepo wa Mungu katika hali ya kiroho when the watchmen wakati walinzi were supposed to be in the towers watching wanastahili kuwa kwenye minara wakitizama you understand what the lord was talking about here je unaelewa yale bwana alikuwa kinenea hapa the watchmen have fallen asleep walinzi wamelala and if you look at the church today na iwapo utalitizama katika sasa the lord is talking about the five fold ministries asleep bwana ananenea huduma tano wakiwa wamelala He is talking about the pastoral. Ananenea uchungaji. The prophet's ministry. Una uchungu huduma unatii. Evangelist. Evangelists. Waubiri. They have fallen asleep. Wote wamelala. And so he's saying. Na sasa asema. Because they fell asleep the enemy attack. Kwa kuwa walilala usingizi, basi yule mwavu akashambulia. This is one of the features that define the fall the apostasy of today hii ndio baadhi ya ya tabia ambayo inaelezea mwanguko wa imani sasa hivi not alert anymore sio hawajakuwa makini tena why are they not alert ni kwa nini hawajamakinika eating wanakula and he says dreaming anasema wanaota so you are calling as a pastor basi mwito wako kama mchungaji you are calling in christian ministry mwito wako kwa huduma wa kikristo makes you a watchman inakufanya kuwa mlinzi because you watch over the sheep maana unawalinda kondoo and when you are watchman na wewe ukiwa mlinzi you don't want anything wrong to happen during your watch hautaki kitu chochote kiende kando wakati wa zamu yako during your watch wakati wa zamu yako you want everything to be safe unataka kila kitu kiwe salama but the lord is saying lakini bwana asema that like it was with israel ya kwamba jinsi ilivyokuwa na Israeli so it is in the church today hivyo ilivyo na kanisa sasa hivi that now the watchmen are not even seeing the devourer coming ya kwamba hata sasa walinzi hawaoni yule wa kurarua akiingia they are now working for self gain sasa wanatafuta faida zao wenyewe and you see that is the essence of the gospel of prosperity na ndio unaona hiyo ndio msingi wa injili ya ufanisi self gain ile faida ya kibinafsi that's why you see i've gone all over the world ndio maana umeona nimeenda kote kote ulimwenguni 
and I'm still going to rebuke the love of money in the church and the love of the gospel of prosperity that the church may know that the marks are here the signs are here the sign of the fall so we may begin and you be awakened now another another mark is in the book of Ezekiel 34 verses 1 to 22 that there are certain features that denote they define this fall basi kuna tabia fulani ambayo inaelezea mwanguko huu how shall we know that we have fallen twawezaje kujua ya kwamba tumeanguka unless we know the standard the benchmark of god tusipojua viwango cha kiwango cha mungu so we may know how much we have fallen ili kwamba tujue ni umbali gani tumeanguka and he begins by mentioning shepherds he mentions the five fold ministry is number 1 na akaanza kunena juu ya uchungaji kwenye huduma tano kuu and hiyo ndio nambari ya kwanza Ezekiel 34 verse 1 to 22 Ezekiel 34 mstari wa kwanza hadi 22 and the word of the lord came to me na neno la bwana likanijia saying son of man likasema mwana adamu prophesy against the ship tabiri dhidi ya wachungaji wa Israeli prophesy and say to them tabiri na uambie even to the spiritual shepherds hata kwenye wachungaji wa kiroho thus says the lord god asema bwana mungu what to the spiritual shepherds of israel ole kwa wale wachungaji wa kiroho wa israeli wa israeli who feed themselves ambao wanajilisha should not the shepherd feed the sheep je wachungaji si wanastahili kulisha kondoo so right away he says one of the key features is this basi moja kwa moja anasema kwamba tabia moja ya kwanza ni hii is that there is malnutrition in the house ya kwamba kuna ukosefu wa chakula madile chakula ndani ya nyumba he say one of the key features the key identity properties characteristics the characters that define the fall now ya kwamba moja wapo ya tabia kitambulisho tabia ambayo inaelezea mwanguko sasa is that the sheep are malnourished ni kwamba kondoo wamekosa lishe the sheep kondoo the sheep have no food they are hungry kondoo wana njaa hawana lishe and he says the reason for that na anasema sababu ya hiyo he says who and you shepherds anasema ole enyi wachungaji that feed themselves wanayojilisha and he says na asema and the shepherds supposed to feed the sheep je wachungaji si wanastahili kulisha kondoo again is talking about the ministry pia ananenea kuhusu huduma that there is a fallen ministry ya kwamba kuna mwanguko kwenye huduma and he saying the consequence is the sheep na anasema kwamba wale ambao wanatabika ni kondoo and he goes on to say na anaendelea kusema about the shepherd so husu wachungaji he said what unto you anasema ole wenu verse 3 mstari wa 3 you eat the fat mnakula vinono mnakula mafuta mnakula mafuta you eat the fat mnakula mafuta and you clothe yourselves with the wool na munajivika kwa zile manyoya you kill the fatlings munaua wale wanono but you do not feed the sheep lakini hamulishi kondoo he say asema that the shepherds have perfected ya kwamba wachungaji wamejiweka kamili the art of exploiting to the mark the resources of the sheep ile hali ya kutumia kikamilifu ile ma, 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 rasimali za kondoo rasilmali rasilmali ya kondoo say, i will eat the fat anasema kwamba atakula mafuta and eat the meat na nile nyama and wear the wool na nivae ile manyoya and i will walk with it na nitatembea kwayo ah! all that hayo yote equals to cruelty inasawazishwa na ukali Have you understood that? Je, umeelewa hayo? Umekuja kutoka kanisa gani? Umekuja toka kanisa gani? Which church have you come from? Umetoka kanisa gani? You know me I'm a widow, I'm just a widow. Wajua mimi ni mjane tu, mimi mjane. Oh, you are a widow. Wewe ni mjane. Have we put you in our book of tithes and offerings? Je, umeingizwa kwenye vitabu vya zaka na sadaka? 
Because you know in this church We don't fool around with that Because it's written in scripture And then they say uh, I, I need to do counseling with you If you're a widow So the first counseling How much wealth did your husband live hey, What did he live land Je, alikuachia ardhi? What did he leave with you? Alikuachia nini? How much money? Pesa ngapi alikuachia? You see, I just have uh, 500,000 which I sold the other land. I have another property there. Of whatever whatever they say. Ujue niko tu na shilingi 1500 niliuza shamba pale na ingine pale. Chochote watakachokuambia. The Lord wants you to bring it first. Bwana anataka ulete kwanza. They are cruel. Wao ni wakali. They don't have mercy. Hawana rehema. But I just mentioned the properties of Jesus. Lakini nimesema uh, tabia ya Yesu. I just mentioned the character of God. Nimenena tu tabia ya Mungu. Merciful. Nimesema ni mwarehema. Kind. Yeye ni mkarimu. Goodness. Yeye ni wawema. Righteous. Yeye ni wenye haki. Holy. Mtakatifu. Right. Yeye ni wa haki. Yes. Dio. You must know where the fall has come from. You know the corrupting aspect of money. That's why I have rebuked it. I have rebuked it. I will rebuke it even unto the death. Jesus rebuked it. The features that mark today's fall. Tabia inaweka alama ya mwanguko wa sasa. I am reading now. Ninasoma sasa. And he says further on. Anasema kuendelea. The diseased, the, the diseased, rather not diseased, diseased. The diseased and weak, you have not strengthened. Waliokufa na wadaifu hauja watia nguvu. The sick you have not healed. Wagonjo hauja wapenya. The hurt and crippled you have not bandaged. Waliokumizwa na vilema hauja watia kikitamba. Those gone astray you have not brought back. Waliopotoka hauja warejesha. The lost you have not sought to find. Waliopotea hauja tuka kuenda kuatafuta. But with force and hardship and, and hard heartedness. Lakini kwa nguvu na ugumu and harshness na ukali you have ruled them umewa umewa kalia umewa tawala i am speaking here nina nena hapa oh yes yeah. he's saying asema that there is a character of heart ya kwamba kuna ile tabia ya moyo that goes with the shepherd of christ ambaye inaambatana na mchungaji wa kristo how to bandage the weak jinsi ya kuwaweka kitambaa wale wadhaifu you should see the prayer requests that come here unastahili kuona ile maombi ya maombi ambayo inakuja kwenye rununo hii i think there are over 250 or plus na... sometimes more per day and some critical cases which we can handle right now i i forward it to you i for all is for you people nafikiri ni zaidi i say call them call this person nafikiri ni zaidi ya 250 ambao tuimade kwa siku moja na ingine nyeti ambao nimewapelekea maaskofu natumai tutazisi when you a time when i look at the prayer wakati mwingine nikitizama hilo ombi i fall on my knees ninaanguka magotini because it hurts me maana inaniumiza i say wow nasema all the sheep of Christ are hurting. Kondo wa Bwana wa Kristo wanaumia. And it is everything. Na ni kila kitu from disease to 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 pain to to divorce to poverty to no food to everything else the whole story. Kutoka kwa ugonjwa, thrown out, uchu, thrown out. Kutupwa nje, kugonjwa na kuumizwa yote. Orphans thrown out. Mayatima wanatupwa nje. And they say man of God you are our only father. Na wa, wanasema nabii wa Bwana wewe ndiye baba wetu wa pekee. So there is a situation in the church. Basi kuna hali katika kanisa. That demands demand. Ambayo inaitisha. This is the justification. Hii ndio kuidhinisha. This is what commands the church. Hii ndio inaamurisha kanisa. To restore now. Kurejeshwa sasa. Because there is too much pain. Maana kuna uchungu mwingi. If you wanted no why should we talk about purity in the church? This is a major reason. There is so much pain. That only a pure church. Only purity. Can bring healing to this church. 
unaweza leta uponyaji kwenye kanisa hili but then anyway, look at what he says na hata hivyo wacha tuone yale ambayo anasema he goes on to say anaendelea kusema and you and, and all were scattered na wote wametawanyika because there was no shepherd kwa sababu hapakuwa na mchungaji and when they were scattered they became food for the wild beasts of the forest of the field na walipotawanywa wakawa ndio chakula cha wanyama mwitu my beasts wandered through the mountains na wale wanyama mwitu wakatawanya kwenye milima i don't want to read all sitaki kusoma yote but all i'm saying is this lakini yote nisemao ni haya is now saying sasa asema that another feature of the fall ya kwamba tabia moja ya mwanguko is the scattering of the sheep ni kutawanya kwa wale kondoo and he says they run up the mountains na anasema wanakimbilia vilimani when you read further on he said they run up the mountains au ukiendelea kusoma anasema kwamba wanakimbilia kwenye vilima and every perceivable hill na kwenye kilima chochote kinachoonekana when they see anything raised like this they run there that they might get grass wanakiona chochote ambacho kimeinuka wanakimbia ili waweze kupata malisho what is the meaning of that maana ya hiyo ni ipi because the shepherds did not feed the sheep kwa sababu wachungaji hawakulisha kondoo the sheep are now hungry kondoo sasa wananjaa and look at what the sheep are doing tizama wale kile ambao kondoo wanafanya when they see any small hill wakiona kilima chochote they run there thinking hoping to get some grass to feed wanakimbilia wakiwa natumaya kwamba watapata chochote another one this side kingine kule when meaning inamaanisha when they see a new church has opened up wakiona kanisa mpya imeinuliwa they run there hoping to get some true word wanakimbia pale wakitumai kupata neno nzuri when they see a new evangelist from america bring crusade down they run there wakimuona mwinjilisti mmoja toka america wakihubiri anakimbia pale in the town kwenye muji that there is a crusade ya kwamba kunao mkutano wa adhara you find they are full there hoping to eat something unawapata wamejaza pale wakiwa natumai kuita kukula kitu that is one of the characteristics that has defined the fall of this hour in the church hiyo ndio moja wapo ya tabia ambayo imeelezea mwanguko wa kanisa Nane. Listen to what he says the characteristic of the fall. Sikiza yale ambayo anasema tabia ya mwanguko. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. Na Yesu alitoka akaenda kwenye vijiji na vijiji teaching in their synagogues akifundisha kwenye masinagogi yao and proclaiming the good news na akinena ujumbe mwema the gospel injili of the kingdom ya ufalme and curing all kinds of diseases na akiponya magonjwa yote and every weakness na udhaifu wote and infirmity na u- u- ulegevu wote That is one of the features that has marked the fall. Hiyo ndio moja wapo ya tabia ambayo inaweka alama ya mwanguko sasa leo. That if you have been called as pastors to this order. Ya kwamba iwapo umeitwa kama mchungaji katika mpangilio huu. Then the absence of pastors doing this. Basi kutokuwa na wachungaji wanaofanya haya. Going from town and villages to Waki, town, town to town. Wakitoka toka mji mmoja hadi mwingine. Village to village. Kijiji hadi kingine. Preaching and bringing healing to them. Wakihubiri na kuwaletea uponyaji. And talk, talking to the weak and binding them up, strengthening. Wakiwanenea wadhaifu na kuwafungia vitambaa hata kuwatia nguvu. If this is the proclamation that called you into pastoring iwapo haya ndio maneno yaliyokuita katika uchungaji then the absence of this now basi kutokuwa na haya sasa is a feature hiyo ndio tabia is a hallmark hiyo ndio alama of this fall ya mwanguko huu zekaria 10 zekaria mlango wa 10 23 msari wa pili hadi wa 3 Jeremiah 23 Jeremiah 23 1 to 13 1 hadi 13 This is the equipping of the church Hii ndio kupatia vifaa kanisa The Lord is discipling you to the seasoning kwa munyu Bwana anawaelekeza katika kutiwa munyu Oh yes there has been difference between this church and the other church Dio shati kuwa na tofauti kati ya kanisa hili and, na makanisa mengine This is the difference Na hii ndio utofauti This one here Hii hapa 
the Lord saw the condition of the church. Bwana aliona hali ya kanisa. After the fall. Baada ya mwanguko. It seemed that nobody cared. Inaonekana kana kwamba hakuna na ajali. No. I have found out. Nimegundua. Of course I have so many daughters all over the world and sons. Nina right? binti na wana wengi kote kote ulimwenguni. But one of the things I found out. Lakini kiji jambo moja ambao nimegundua is they love ni kwamba wamependa for you to ask. Ili kwamba uwaulize. For somebody to be paying attention. Mtu ambaye anakuwa anawajishughulisha kwao. That's why psychologists and psychiatrists. Ndio madaktari wa psychology na psychiatrists they are making a lot of money today. Wanatengeneza pesa nyingi kwa sasa hivi. Especially in the developed world. Asa sana kwenye zile nyinchi ambazo zimekuwa. Because they just sit down. Maana wanakaa tu chini. And then you come. Alafu unakuja. And you begin to talk. Na unaanza kuongea. And they are doing like that. Na wanafanya hivyo. And, and, and when you felt like that what did you think na uliposikia hivyo ulifikiriaje oh oh when you thought like that what did you feel Apa, you know whichever way ulipofikiria hivyo ulifanya nini oh yes okay and uh, that day when you felt like that did you eat your breakfast na siku ile uliposikia hivyo je ulikula kiamsha cha kinywa chako okay do you normally eat lunch in good time je huwa unakula mankuli yako ya adhuri kila siku what time do you get back home ni wakati gani unarudi nyumbani so you see ba this person here basi waona huyu mtu hapa is now at least caring sasa anajihusisha somebody cares anajali so that's why you find them calling all the time ndio maana kila mara wanapiga kila mara i know this because i did a bit of counseling on the other side of the ocean najua haya maana nilifanya ushauri sehemu nyingine nyingine ya bahari but this was counseling in the medical center these were people now of another class lakini hii ilikuwa ushauri katika matibabu kiwango ama tabaka nyingine these were anesthesiologists and the surgeons and the doctors at the medical center hao walikuwa wapasuaji na madaktari katika sehemu ya matibabu when they learned that there was somebody in the other block who is doing counseling every day 6 pm to the medical team wanapojua kwamba kuna mtu ambaye anashauri kikundi cha matibabu katika kiwango hicho they you, you know it was amazing because you find them the, the conference room where i used to do the counseling from wajua yashangaza maana ukumbi ule ambao nilikuwa nikifanya ushauri and then outside the next the stairs there were a lot of sofas there resting area sitting area basi kule ku nje kulikuwa na viti vizuri ambao kulikuwa mipango vya kukaa very soon they feel that place hivi karibuni unapata wamejaza sehemu hizo and it was always amazing to me na ilikuwa ya kushangaza kwangu even in the very highly learned status they were in hata katika hali ya elimu ya hali ya juu waliokuwamo they, they asked am i the next patient wanauliza je mimi ndio mgonjwa wa kufuata then i said no she came before you let me first see her nasema pana walikuja mbele yako acha nimshuhudie kwanza they have already converted into patients tayari wamejiingiza katika ugonjwa and i was trying to write a book called the healing process na nilikuwa nikianza kuandika kitabu kuhusu sehemu ama hatua ya uponyaji because some of them even they say at 2 am they call you once they realize now you care now you give them the number 2 am they call i am here standing i want to throw myself in front of the l the l is electric train in chicago the, the, the high speed electric train yes. so it comes high speed but because it's long so the head person so and kuna... then and then by the time it stops the head there and the coaches are here so then it stops and then you enter the next door inakuja the, the immediate door that's open inakuja kwa kasi sana so inapita kwa haraka basi inaposimama ni unafikia kwenye ule mlango wa kuingilia people threw themselves before the train he said she crashed watu wanajitupa kwenye ilo ilo gari la moshi kabla hawajapita alafu inawakanyaga so i have found out nimegundua that everybody on earth ya kwamba kila mtu duniani they want somebody to care about them wanataka mtu awajali meaning ya maanisha to keep their tab aweze ku uh, no, aweze kulinda um, ratiba zao aweze kulinda ratiba zao so you can know when they came ili uweze kujua ni lini walivyokuja did you come back at 2 in the morning je ulirudi saa 8 za asubuhi why did you come back at 2 je ulirudi mbona ulirudi saa 8 no that is wrong the 
bugs can kill you. Hiyo ni mbaya wakora wanaweza kukuua. Please next time don't do that. Wakati mwingine usifanye hivyo. And in fact next time call me so we can send two drivers to pick you so you don't risk your life. Na hata hivyo wakati mwingine nipigie simu ili nikutumie madereva wa kuchukue usihatarishe maisha yako. People want somebody to care. Watu wanataka watu wa wajali. The Lord saw the church. Bwana aliona kanisa. And he found out na akagundua that nobody simply cared. Ya kwamba hakuna anayejali. Whether she went to church. Iwapo alienda kanisa. Whether she ate. Iwapo alikula. It is called free spirit. Hiyo inaita roho ambayo iko huru. You can do what you want. Waweza tenda chochote utapendacho. Nobody rep- uh, let me put it properly. Wacha niweke vema. People want to be rebuked. Watu wanataka kukemewa. Everybody wants to be rebuked. Kila mtu anataka kukemewa. Because rebuke maana kukemea every time the Lord rebuked Israel. Kila mara Bwana alikemea Israeli. He was actually redirecting Israel. Hata hivyo alikuwa akiwaelekea akiwaongoza upya. It was a big love to Israel. Ulikuwa ni upendo mkuu kwa Israeli. The same thing about the church. Vivyo ndivyo ilivyo na kanisa. For Israel, kwa Israeli, the worst time in Israel. Wakati mbaya zaidi kwa Israeli is when God simply never spoke. Ni wakati Bwana alikimia. They call it an awful silence. Wakasema kwamba ni kimya ambacho si kizuri. That happened to Israel. Kilichotukia kwa Israeli. And when you are in that silence, na ukiwa kwenye kimya hicho, Am I on the right track? I'm not on the right track. Unashindwa je, niko kwenye njia nzuri ama niko kwa njia mbaya? That's why. Ndio maana everybody wants somebody to care. Kila mtu anataka mtu anayemjali. Everybody wants somebody to rebuke them. Kila mtu anataka mtu anayemkemea. And to do so, na kufanya hivyo. The Lord brought them a father. Bwana akawaletea baba. A father of eternity. Baba wa umilele. And the father does this. Na baba atenda haya. What he normally does? Kile atendacho. He cares when do you come back? Anajalishwa je, unarudi sangapi? When do you leave? Unatoka sangapi? Did you eat? Je, ulikula? Did you go to church? Je, ulienda kanisani? What are you wearing? Unavaa nini? Who are your friends? Nani marafiki zako? The Lord was bringing order to the fall. Bwana alikuwa kileta mpangilio kwa mwanguko from the rescue plan. Kutoka kwenye mpango wa kuokoa. Right now. Ya kwamba sasa the other church has fallen. Makanisa ingine ile imeanguka. Because nobody cares. Bwana hakuna anayejalishwa. He said it here. Alisema hapa. That they care about their stomach. Ya kwamba wanajalishwa kuhusu tumbo zao. They care about their food. Wanajalishwa na chakula chao. They drink. Hinywa chivyao. And they say tomorrow will even be greater. Na wanasema kesho itakuwa kuu zaidi. Nobody cares. Hakuna anayejali. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Twendele. Same verse 6 still. Mstari wa sita huo huo. Over Isaiah. Wa Isaiah. And he says here. Asema hapa. Prince of peace. Mfalme wa amani. If you see the Lord bringing them a prince of peace. Ukimuona Bwana akiwaletea mfalme wa amani. That means yamaanisha They had lost their peace. Walikuwa wamepoteza amani yao. But everybody look at me. Lakini kila mmoja muangalie. What does that mean inside? Hiyo yamaanisha nini? How do you get peace after this fall? Wawezaje kupata amani baada ya mwanguko huu? He was saying essentially. Alikuwa akisema kimsingi that at that point. Ya kwamba kwenye halama hiyo there was no reconciliation with God. Hakukuwa na kurejeshwa na Mungu. So he had to bring a reconciliator. Basi ikabidi aweze kumleta mtu wa kurejesha that can reconcile them to god anayeweza kuwarejesha kwa Mungu and there is only one way to reconcile them to god na kuna njia moja tu ya kurejeshwa kwa Mungu repentance soba but they may repent ili kwamba waweze kutubu and prepare for that kingdom na kujiandaa kwa ufalme huo he had to bring them ili bidi awalete in the rescue plan katika mpango wa kuokoa something that speaks about what they lost kitu ambacho kinanenea kile walichokipoteza if they are coming to repent iwapo wanakuja kutubu that can only tell us hiyo yaweza kutueleza tu that they had lost righteousness ya kwamba wamepoteza uhaki and by repentance na kwa toba he was making endeavors anaoezesha kuelekea wanaweza he was wanting to bring them back to 
what they lost. kuwarejesha kwa yale ambao walikuwa wamepoteza. Repentance. Toba. Means I had it. Nilikuwa nayo. But I lost it. Lakini nilipoteza. And when I lost it, nilipopoteza, now I want to stop here. Sasa nataka komea hapa. Repent, toba and take it back. Nitubu na nirudishe. And that thing I defined here today. Na hicho kitu ndio nimeelezea hapa leo hii. That thing that they are going to take back I defined here today. Hicho kitu ambacho nimewaeleza kwamba watarejesha kwacho ndio nimeelezea hapa. It is called what? Inaitwa nini? Spiritual purity. Usafi wa kiroho. Righteousness. Uhaki. Morality. Usu um, um, uadilifu. Fidelity. Holiness. Utakatifu. I mentioned those things here. Na linena ha, nilisema haya yote hapa. You so, so you see how this message comes back. Basi waona ujumbe huu jinsi unavyorejea. Started there. Ulianzia hapo. And brought to you now the consequences of losing that purity. Na ikakuletea hatari ya kupoteza usafi huu. And the rescue plan to restore it. Na mpango wa kurejesha ambao utaurejesha. And now he's saying. Na sasa asema that repentance. Ya kwamba to no he's mentioning a few things. Ananena mambo mafulani machache. He's saying asema he's coming as wonderful counselor. Anarudi anarudi kama mshauri wa ajabu. We used just to go like that sagging trouser. Tulikuwa tukikuja tu na suruali zilizolegezwa. Wanatembea huko wanavuta sigara wanakunywa pombe. Wanakunywa tu pombe na kuvuta sigara. And they are not caring they're putting the heart facing backwards. Hawajali kofia zao zinaelekezwa nyuma. They are not caring now. Hawajali tena. But he said lakini asema he will now bring the rule of God. Sasa ataleta utawala wa Mungu. And he says, na asema, when he brings it, anapoileta, he brings government, governance first. Analeta utawala, utawala kwanza. Meaning to put things in certain order. Inamaanisha kwamba kuleta vitu kwenye mpangilio fulani. And when he brings governance, na anapoleta utawala, he said inside there. Na anasema mule ndani. Council, council will be key. Shauri itakuwa nyeti. Then they, they will get council. Na watapata ushauri. But the one who is coming to advise them. Lakini yule anayekuja kuwashauri. If you follow his name. Ukifuata jina lake. He's called mighty God. Anaitwa Mungu Mkuu. Which means he's bringing the counsel of God. Inamaanisha analeta ushauri wa Mungu. To the church. Kwa kanisa. After that. Baada ya hayo. He said like orphans they have been. Anasema jinsi walivyokuwa kama yatima. They have been like orphans. Wamekuwa kama yatima. But now, lakini sasa, I bring them a father of eternity. Ninawaletea baba wa umilele. So now somebody, so some of you when I rebuke you, you understand why, right? Kwa hivyo sasa ninapowakemea mnaelewa ni kwa nini? Because I see quite a lot of times I see a pastor gone this way, gone this way, and then I rebuke very seriously. Maana ninaona mengi, naona mchungaji enda huku na huku na ninamkemea vizuri. It is love. Ni upendo. It be speaks, it be speaks. Somebody cares. Inanenea yule mtu anayejali. The worst thing is for nobody care. Kitu kibaya zaidi ni wakati mtu hajali. Many times you can forget. Mara kwa mara mwaweza sahau. And say ah, sisi tuko kwenye toba. Na, me, me, we, we we are in repentance. Namuanza kusema sisi tuko kwenye toba. We are in holiness. Tuk- we have the prophet sitting in the house. Sisi tuko kwa utakatifu tuna nabii ambaye amekaa kwenye nyumba. Be careful. Makinikeni. That is the complacency that made the church go under. Hiyo ndio ulegevu ambao ulifanya kanisa likaenda chini. Did you understand me? Je, mnanielewa? You cannot say hauwezi sema that me I lower my guard. Ya kwamba mimi nitashusha ulinzi wangu. Yes, because I am in the ministry. Kwa sababu niko kwenye huduma. That's why ndio maana these things i remind to you mambo haya ni ya kutukumbusha that what we have ya kwamba kile tulicho nacho is a spiritual gain ni ya faida ya kiroho and since we have it na kwa kuwa tunacho we have to preserve it lazima tuilinde and continue to make na tuendelee kufanya faida we cannot lose it hatuwezi poteza and so he said basi alisema i can see that they have no peace ninaona ya kwamba hawana amani let me send them a prince of peace wacha niwatumie mfalme wa amani the, the, the prince of peace mfalme mfalme wa amani but look at this now tizama haya sasa the prince of peace that was being sent yule mfalme amani aliyokuwa kitumwa look at what is happening here tizama yale ambayo yanatendeka hapa he is bringing his own peace to you 
analeta amani yake mwenyewe kwako not the peace of anybody or anyone sio amani ya mtu mwingine yote ama dunia nyingine and he says na asema my peace i give to you amani yangu na wapeni and my peace is not like the peace of the world na amani yangu si kama amani ya ulimwengu the peace that the world gives amani ambayo dunia ama ulimwengu inapeana which is temporary ambaye ni ya kuharibika leo amani Leo amani kesho kulia kesho ni kilio no hapana is the peace of god asema amani ya mungu that transcends human understanding ishindayo akili ya binadamu and because he's a father of, of eternity na kwa sababu yeye ndiye baba wa umilele look tizama the father of eternity look baba wa umilele tizama this, this is his family right hii ni familia yake ha huh? What he will do is this. Kile atakachotenda ni hiki. He can only teach them about eternity. Anaweza tu kuwafundisha kuhusu umilele. Ah. Uh, he says, asema, of the increase of his government, katika kuongezeka kwa serikali yake, and of peace, na wa amani, there shall be no end. Akutakuwa na mwisho. The throne of David, kiti cha enzi cha Daudi. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me let me repeat. It. Of the increase of his government, katika kuongezeka kwa utawala wake, and of peace, na wa amani, there shall be no end. Hakutakuwa na mwisho. Oh. Upon the throne of David, na juu ya kiti cha enzi cha Daudi, and over his kingdom, na juu ya utawala wake, you say to, to establish it and to uphold it anasema kuimarisha na hata kuinua with justice and righteousness kwa uhaki na uhaki so from the latter time kwenye nyakati za mwanzo forth even forevermore hapo kuendelea hadi umilele the zeal of the lord ile ari ya bwana the lord of hosts bwana wa majeshi will perform this ila itatenda haya okay now listen to this basi sikia ni haya i have put for you people the rescue plan nimewekeeni ile mpango wa kuokoa together kuweka pamoja that you may understand how the church can have purity restored ili kwamba muweze kuelewa ni jinsi gani kanisa linaweza kurejeshwa kwenye usafi but look at what he says here lakini tizama anachosema in the rescue plan katika mpango wa kuokoa elements that must be put, put in place kuna vipengee ambao sharti uviwekwe fa, ma, mahali but, but if you look carefully now na ukitizama kwa makinifu now he saying sasa asema that this restoration is eternal ya kwamba urejesho huu ni wa umilele he says asema that the one who is coming ya kwamba yule ajaye actually has a reignship a kingdom that is eternal hakika ana utawala wa milele and when he comes with an eternal mind na anapokuja na mawazo ya kimilele eternal agenda ma, 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 agenda ya umilele he centralizes in righteousness basi anaweka kati uhaki then the justice of god na uhaki wa mungu ah justice and righteousness haki ya mungu precious people watu wa damani you begin to understand unaanza kuelewa what the lord what, what the church lost kile ambacho kanisa lilipoteza what the lord lost kile bwana alipoteza when the church disobeyed fell wakati kanisa lilikosa kuti likanguka so today when you look at today's church basi leo hii unapolitizama kanisa la leo you say oh i understand what she lost anyway unasema hata hivyo ninaelewa kile alichokipoteza hata hivyo but i thought jesus came to redeem her lakini nilifikiria kwamba yesu alikuja kumkomboa and this one has now lost it again lakini huyu pia amepoteza tena and that's why the church today na ndio maana kanisa leo looks like she's looking she's longing and seeking for a second deliverance linakaka na kwamba linatafuta na linashauku ya kupata ukombozi wa pili hallelujah hallelujah this that the lord is planting in you today hiki ambacho bwana anapanda ndani mwenyu leo hii can only sharpen the church kinaweza tu kuweka makali kwa kanisa purify the church isafishe kanisa and bring entry 
Asubuhi na ilete kuingia into the kingdom of God katika ufalme wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 25 verse 1 I'm now the next scriptures I'm reading in a hurry but that does not mean you read them in a hurry. Lakini maandiko haya nitasoma kwa haraka. Hallelujah. Haimaanisha mtasoma kwa haraka. Because of time I'm looking at my time. Kwa ajili ya wakati natizama wakati wangu. Isaiah 25 Isaiah 25 verse 1 Mstari wa kwanza. This is what he says. Hii ndio anayesema. Kwanza. Oh Lord, oh Bwana, you are my God. Wewe ni Mungu wangu. I will exalt you. Nitakuinua. I will praise your name. Nitalisifu jina lako. So you have done wonderful things. Maana umetenda mambo ya ajabu. Even purposes planned. Hata makusudi iliyopangwa of old. Ya ukale and fulfilled na ukatimiza in faithfulness katika uaminifu and truth na ukweli what does that tell you hiyo ya kuambia nini about the rescue plan kuhusu mpango wa kuokoa number one na jambo la kwanza that god cannot be caught unaware ya kwamba bwana hawezi akapatikana tu the lord can never be caught unaware bwana hawezi kashituliwa meaning yamaanisha when he created the church alipoliumba kanisa he already knew tayari alijua that one good day ya one, kwamba, one bad day ya kwamba siku moja mbaya she is going to fall atanguka and i have to put place in place a rescue plan na sharti niweke mikakati mipango ya kumrejesha actually this scripture humbled me hata hivyo andiko hili linanyenyekeza let me explain to you how it humbled me wacha niwaelezeni jinsi inavyo nilinyenyekeza this scripture explained to me this andiko hili inanielezea haya that now i understand ya kwamba sasa naelewa why it was a super plan ni kwa nini ulikuwa mpango mzuri zaidi the plan that the lord gave in the creation of the church mpango ambaye bwana alitoa wakati alikuwa kiumba kanisa the image and likeness of god the father umbo na kufanana kwa baba mungu the image and likeness of christ jesus umbo na kufanana kwa kristo yesu the image and likeness of the holy spirit umbo na kufanana kwa roho mtakatifu and then he put it together in this creation called the church kisha akaiweka pamoja katika kiumbe hiki akiitacho kanisa now i understand very well basi sasa naelewa vizuri sana he had to put together a robust robust plan ili bidi aweze ku weka mpango kamili to rescue her why ili aweze kumkomboa kwa nini because the investment is so heavy maana kule kuwekezwa ni kuzito sana the investment was very heavy kule kuwekezwa kulikuwa kwa uzito mwingi and we know that our god never ever loses na twajua kwamba mungu wetu hawezi kapoteza kamwe so he had to put together basi ilimbidi aweze kujumuisha a plan to rescue mpango wa kurejesha that he may save the investment on man ili kwamba aweze kuokoa kule kuwekezwa kwa binadamu but we know what god is capable of lakini twajua ni nini bwana aweza kutenda to wipe out the earth and begin afresh anaweza hata kufutilia mbali dunia na kuanza ukwa. I have always wondered. Nimekuwa nikishindwa. Why? Ni kwa nini? Bargaining with the church. Unaendelea kuzungumza na kanisa. At times you see the way they, they, they abuse the Lord. Una, wakati mwingine unaona jinsi wanamtuka na Bwana. And you say wow. Na unasema at times you fear that the Lord might crush them. You wakati mwingine hata una hofu ya kwamba Bwana anaweza hata wasaga. But in scripture it says he tarries that they may be brought into repentance. Lakini kwenye andiko anasema kwamba anasubira ili kwamba waweze kuletwa kwenye toba. And he, the, moving on now. Tukiendelea. John chapter 3:16. Yohana mlango wa 3:16. One of the, uh, the other rescue plan. Mpango mmoja wa kuokoa. Second Samuel Samueli wa pili chapter 7 mlango wa saba verses 11 to 14 mstari wa 11 hadi 14 the focus is purity lengo ni usafi the beginning mwanzo the standard ikiwango super plan mpango mkuu the fall mwanguko how much work hiyo njia njia kazi kiasi gani the rescue plan very good the rescue plan mpango wa kurejesha and then inside the rescue plan alafu mule ndani kwenye mpango wa kurejesha they know what they ought to do wanajua ni nini wanastahili kufanya when he says inaposema that nobody cares ya kwamba hakuna anayejali 
Meaning now the Lord cares. Inamanisha sasa bwana anajali. Now you cannot live your life like anybody else. Basi sasa hauwezi ishi maisha kama mtu mwingine yule. You are now accountable. Sasa utatoa hesabu. Now you have somebody you must account to say jana niliingia saa ngapi? Leo ninaenda mahali fulani. Je, niende ama nisiende? Sasa una mtu wa kumtolea hesabu ya kwamba jana niliingia saa fulani na leo nitatoa si nitatoka saa fulani. Sijui niende ama nisiende. It's not any more free spirit. Sio ni roho iliyo huru. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And remember the key penance I gave you. Nakumbuka ile madili nyeti ambayo niliwapatia. He said in the definition of purity. Akasema katika maelezo ya usafi. Is the definition of born again. Ni maelezo ya kuokoka. A believer. Ya muamini. And he says. Na asema distinct. Tofautisha a distinct a distinct people a, watu walio tofautishwa and a separate people na watu walio tengwa and later on he said na baadaye asema a unique people watu wa kipekee so you need to know that basi sharti mjue haya and that the problem is this na shida ni hii and that is the problem na hii ndio shida why the church has fallen ni kwa nini kanisa limeanguka they have not perceived that they are special people hawajajua ya kwamba ni watu maalumu When there is sexual sin on the other side. Wakati kuna dhambi ya usherati upande huu. They also buy into sexual sin. Wao pia wanaanguka kwenye usherati. When there is lies on the other side. Wakati kuna uongo upande huu. They also buy into lies. Nao pia wanaingia kwenye uongo. Witchcraft. Uchawi. They get him. Na wanaingia mule. But the Lord is awakening your senses now. Lakini Bwana anawaamshani sasa. And you say hey. Anasema say. You are a special people. Nyinyi ni watu ma- And he said Nasema, that without purity there is no salvation. Ya kwamba bila usafi hapana uokovu. And without separateness. Na bila kujitenga. Separation. Kujitenga. Forget it. Sahau. There is no salvation. Hakuna uokovu. So you must keep that in your mind as we are moving towards the end. Basi sharti utie hayo kwenye mawazo yako tunapofikia tamati. A special people. Watu maalum. Chosen by the Lord. Walioteuliwa na Mungu. And if you look at the agenda. Na ukitizama agenda. To bring to implement. Ni kule na kuwekeza the policies of god sera za mungu in the nations ndani ya mataifa in the earth kwa ulimwenguni on the world kwenye dunia to bring the implementation ili kuweka ule utendaji of the policies of god ya sera za mungu meaning what yamaanisha nini the righteousness of the lord uhaki wa bwana and he said na asema purity equals righteousness usafi wa wa unasawazishwa na uhaki that if the church lost purity na kwamba iwapo kanisa ilipoteza usafi for apostasy to throb and to flourish kwa mwanguko wa imani na starehe then it means basi yamaanisha that what she lost kile alichokipoteza was essentially righteousness kimusingi ni uhaki but he also gave you the reason why lakini pia alikupa sababu he said this obedience akasema ni kutoti you have been spoon fed mmelishwa na kijiko na kijiko na kijiko <laughs> It started from you right? Ilianzia kwako. I wanted you to preach this because I said Kericho is far and there are 3000. What is it teaching to them? Maana nilitaka kuahubiri kumu, haya. Maana Kericho ni mbali na ningependa aweze kufundisha haya. A strong word. Neno la nguvu. So when 3000 strong come. Ili kwamba watu 1500 tu wenye nguvu wakija. 10000 strong come. Watu 1000 wakija. Whichever thousands across everybody here. Elfu zozote zile kwa watu wote walio kwa hapa. Then they leave saying. Basi watatoka wakisema. Ah. Ah, he has met my expectation. Basi amefikia matarajio yangu. The worst thing for a pastor. Kitu kibaya kwa mchungaji. Is to hear the sheep saying. Ni kusikia kondo wakisema. I am still convinced. Oh, bado nimeshaushika. I have to keep searching. Lazima niendelee kusitafuta. For another church. Kwa kanisa leo. He has not met my expectation. Ina maana hajafikia matarajio yangu. If you understand what I'm clamoring for here. Ni wapo utaelewa yale ambao ninanena hapa. Ninalilia hapa. Ninalilia hapa. I'm trying to save the image of Christ. Najaribu kusema najaribu kuokoa umbo wa Kristo. 
in the glorious ministry you behold katika huduma huwa utukufu ambao mko nao this ministry is one of his kind huduma huu ni moja wa kipekee this is the ministry that finally brings rest settlement huu ndio huduma wa pekee ambao hatimaye unaleta pumziko so now i know i have reached unasema hatimaye nimefika because when you preach righteousness maana unapohubiri uhaki it satisfies the soul of the sheep inashibisha nafsi ya kondoo and it heals them na inawaponya whatever infirmity chochote kile mark okay, now chapter 1 verse 11 asema mariko 1:11 and hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 9 hebrania 1:1 hadi 9 Isaiah chapter 40 verses 9 to 11. Isaiah mlango wa 40 mstari wa 9 hadi 11. I am reading that one. Ninasoma hiyo. You who bring good tidings uh, let me read the amplified. He says Asema Oh you who oh you who bring good tidings to Zion. Eni nyinyi mnaoleta mema kwa Zion. Get up to the high mountain. Amukeni kwenye vilima vya juu. Oh you who bring good tidings to Jerusalem. Eni nyinyi mnaoleta mema Yerusalemu. And he says, na asema, lift up your voice with strength. Inueni sauti zenu kwa nguvu. Lift up. Inueni. Lift it up. Inueni. But not afraid. Not be not afraid. Na musiogope say to the cities of Judah. Waambieni miji ya Yuda. Behold your God. Tazama bwana wenu. And he says behold the Lord God. Na asema tazama bwana Mungu will come with might. Atakuja kwa uku. And his arm will rule for him. Na mkono wake utamtawala. Behold Tizama. His reward is with him. Ushira wake u pamoja naye. And recompense. Na atalipisha. Ata And in Spanish they say recompensa. Na kwa Kispaniola wanasema recompense. But listen to this now. Sikiza haya sasa. There are other scriptures I gave you without reading. Kuna maandiko fulani ambayo niwapatia bila kusoma. And in part of them when he's coming to restore righteousness as we saw in verse 7 Isaiah 9. Na kwa sehemu fulani utaona wakati anakuja kuinua uhaki. Jinsi tumeona kwenye kitabu cha Zayatisa is coming with an iron scepter anakuja na na, na fumbo ya chuma yeah, very good an iron scepter na fimbo ya chuma is coming with the rod of rulership anakuja na fimbo ya ubiliki meaning ya maanisha that is the rod of righteousness hiyo ndio fimbo ya uhaki meaning ya maanisha he will say if he says homosexuality is sin Aki, it will be sin akisema ushoga ni dhambi itakuwa dhambi there is no negotiating around it hakuna kuongelea kuihusu and now he talks here about the coming of the messiah na sasa ananena kuhusu kuja kwa masihi he says when he na anasema ajapo he comes with righteousness anakuja na uhaki be careful about this makinika kwa ajili hiyo because this one is double edged maana huu ni upanga ukatao kuvuti as he talks about righteousness anaponena kuhusu uhaki you the road you see unaona ile fimbo then you see the judgment of the lord basi unaona hukumu ya mungu also pia But here he is talking about the coming of the king. Lakini kwa hapa ananena kuhusu kuja kwa mfalme. He, is told, he says when he comes in might. Na anasema ajapo kwa utukufu. Then he's carrying his reward. Basi anatabeba thawabu zake. Recompense. Ambaye atalipisha. To recompense to compense the church. Ili aweze kuwapatia uh, kanisa. Make sure you teach that very elaborately precious A- people. Hakikisha mmefundisha haya kwa vilindi sana watu wa dhamani. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 36. Matendo ya Romans mlango wa 13:6 Romans chapter 1 verse 16 Warumi 1:16 Revelation 22 verses 7 to 12 Ufunua Yohana 22:7 hadi 12 And then second Corinthians wa Korinto wa pili chapter 7 mlango wa 7 verse 1 mstari wa kwanza I want to finish by reading just one paragraph and then we are done Nataka nimalize kwa kusoma herufu eh, eh, moja alafu tumalize from this article toka kwenye and he says here asema hapa the purity of the soul usafi wa moyo is either totally ignored ni either imekataliwa kikamilifu or just not paid 
the attention it well so deserves in the church today ama ijalenga umakinifu ambao wastahili kufanya kanisani sasa hivi and he goes on to say aendelea kusema the tragic consequences of this matokeo mabaya kabisa ya kutokea kwa haya is translated imetafsiriwa into the innumerable numbers of christians katika hesabu kuu sana ya wakristo who in their execution of their spiritual lifestyle ambao katika maisha yao ya ukristo are today sasa hivi not even aware hata hawajui of the essence ya hali ya msingi ya msingi of this noble virtue ya maadili haya called purity inaoitwa usafi meaning they live like that inamaanisha wanaishi tu hivyo when you look at them you wonder unapowatizama unashindwa are they even aware je hata wanajua that actually that is what will matter on that day ya kwamba hakika hiyo ndio itakuwa ku, itakuwa kusiku ile when the messiah comes wakati masia japo he says the purity of the soul inasema usafi wa moyo indeed includes hakika inajumuisha what a christian feeds on kila mkristo anakula wow what a christian feeds on kila mkristo anachokila is now say now it in, for, for your own information it also include it, it includes what the christian feeds on sasa kwa ujumbe wako inajumuisha kile mkristo anakula he said how hygienized their salvation is meaning how much they have kept impurity from their salvation na inamaanisha kwamba ni jinsi gani wameweka uochafu kutoka kwa wokovu wao meaning yamaanisha how much you have safeguarded your salvation ni jinsi gani um melinda na kutunza wokovu wako he is now defining the work you need to do sasa anaelezea kazi ambayo wastahili kutenda and he says father on na anasema kuendelea and their practice of worship na hali ya ibada yao while it is true maana ni kweli that the integrity of the soul ya kwamba kiwango ama viwango vya moyo wake is squarely contingent upon what spiritual food she feeds on ina legina egemea na kulengegea kile ambacho chakula cha kiroho ana kila it must however be added here sharti iongezwe hapa that the, re, the relentless regiment the relentless regime ya kwamba kutokosa kukoma the re, relentless regime kutokukoma kwa ule utawala of holy worship wa ibada takatifu and lifestyle na hali ya maisha that the church lives ambayo kanisa linaishi a cornerstone ni msingi jiwe la msingi for one important thing kwa jambo moja muhimu sustenance ambayo inadumisha how to sustain the purity you have jinsi ya kudumisha usafi ulonao that is what he's talking about here hiyo ndio yale ananenea hapa it is easy ni rahisi to say you are born again kusema kwamba umeokoka but it's more difficult to sustain it ni ngumu zaidi ku, 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 ku sitiri uh, unless you maintain the principles ila tu uki, uh, ukilenga tu ile misingi yake that are defined in the bible ambayo imeelezewa kwenye biblia obedience kuti to, to maintain separateness to make sure you, you are safe Kuku, your salvation is safe kujitenga na kuhakikisha kwamba wokovu wako usalama and all these things you know precious people na mambo haya yote mwajua watu wa thamani Hence when the church opts for righteous deeds basi wakati kanisa linatamani matendo ya haki she sanctifies herself anajitakasa and can definitely attain a reasonable level of spiritual purity na atafikia kiwango fulani cha usafi wa kiroho of the soul wa moyo such an achievement na kufikilia kiwango hicho that had initially sounded virtually impossible ambayo hapo awali ilikaka na kwamba haiwezekani untenable unachievable isiyofikiliwa isiyopatikana now is accessible sasa yafikiliwa precious people watu wa thamani it has been said very well here imenenwa vizuri sana hapa it is all about purity ya kwamba inahusisha usafi tu even on the cross hata msalabani jesus brought purity kristo yesu alileta usafi but without purity na bila usafi we have no church hatuna kanisa we have no salvation hatuna wokovu without purity bila usafi 
At this time, kwa wakati huu, we will not see the kingdom. Hatutaona ufalme. The mighty kingdom of God. Ufalme mkuu wa Mungu. So listen to me here. Basi nisikizeni. I'm finishing. Namalizia. When you walk out there and see the position of the church, unapotembea kule nje na kuona hali ya kanisa, I want you to cry for them. Nataka muwalilieni. That is a better place to be. Hiyo ndio sehemu njema ya kuwa. But if you will look at your condition and cry for you. Na iwapo utatizama hali yako na ujililie. That means you are the church I'm talking about here. Inamaanisha kwamba wewe ndio kanisa naonenea hapa. The Lord is saying. Bwana asema that go out there ya kwamba enenda pale nje and ilu, i've not read quite a bit and illuminate waanze kuasha the light of christ nuru ya kristo and the light of christ na nuru ya kristo is the purity of god in the church jo usafi wa mungu kanisani that is the glory of the lord that's resident in the believer huo ndio utukufu wa bwana amba unakaa ndani ya muumini but today you have learned something lakini leo hii umejifunza jambo that actually when the lord said in the image and likeness of God. Ya kwamba kimusingi wakati Bwana alisema katika umbo na kufanana kwa Bwana. It was indeed much more lofty than we thought higher. Ilikuwa ya hali ya juu zaidi kuliko vile tulifikiria. Even me I did not know. Hata mimi sikujua. That actually it encompassed the image of God the Father. Ya kwamba hakika ilikuwa imeshikamanisha umbo la Mungu Baba. And you know God the Father. Na mwajua Mungu Baba. God the Son. Mungu Mwana. God the Holy Spirit. Mungu Roho Mtakatifu. They have zero tolerance to sin. Hawawezi kukubaliana na dhambi. Now, sasa, I have said it again and again. Nimesema tena na tena. That you are the church heaven is waiting for. Ya kwamba ninyi ndio kanisa ambalo bingu la subiri. I know he is sending me to prepare other church out there also. Najua ananituma kwenda kuandaa makanisa kanisa lingine kule nje. But if you are the church is focused on now. Lakini iwapo ninyi ndio kanisa amba melenga sasa. Then you have to perfection this purity. Basi sharti mukamilishe usafi huu. Because I have seen the writing. Maana nimeona maandishi all over the sky. Kote kote kwenye anga. That very soon. Ya kwamba hivi karibuni something will happen. Kitu kitatukia. There are serious events behind the scenes. Kunao matukio ya kumaanisha sana nyuma ya matukio hayo. Even how Israel is about to strike Iran. Hata jinsi Israeli wako karibu kushambulia Iran. And many other things that are prophesied for many many years. Na mambo mengi mengine ambayo nimetabiri kwa miaka mingi. You are the church that has heard and seen it in the news. Ninyi ndio kanisa ambalo mmesikia na hata kuona kwenye habari. So now you know. Basi sasa mwajua. What you ought to do? Kile mwastahili kutenda. Bless you. Bwana awabariki. Bless you.